All right, so the first thing we want to do to begin our installation is to come in here and type a sudo app git update. And this will update our Ubuntu server with any patches or any kind of uh, fixes that are required. And you can see it fetched 25 megabytes and it installed something in the background there. And next we want to do a sudo app git upgrade that basically is performing the same kind of thing. It's just making sure that our server is completely up to date with the latest packages and everything. Um, and so it doesn't take long. You can see that's already done. And now what we're going to want to do is install the dependencies that are going to be required to build out our, our Odoo installation uh, and uh, install it. So to do that, we first need to get Python installed with uh, Python 3, and it's a special library here, Python 3-pip. So that's uh, the first thing. We hit that, and you can see it's going to want to install 77 megabytes, so we just hit yes to this. Let it install what it needs to install here. And you can see these are like packages that contain other packages. So when we install this Python 3, it's installing a whole bunch of developer libraries and things that we're going to need. When that's done, one command I can use is clear so that we start with a blank screen. It might make it easier for you to see the commands I'm typing. Um, so that, yeah, the next set of commands that I'm going to put in here is actually a, a whole bunch of libraries that we're going to install. And um, I'm going to actually copy and paste it so I'm not going to type all this out. Um, I'll leave it up for just a second if, in case you don't have access to the, the PDF file that I'll, that I'll upload and make available for this. But you can see there we got sudo apt install and it's going to install git. It puts that Python 3, 3 pip in there again, um, build essentials and so on. It's installing these all these libraries. We just hit enter and let it do them. Hit yes to the commands here and let it complete its install. Now, the next step is we need to create a user to run this o the Odoo uh, server application because it's just bad form to use your standard root access account to do this. So this is a, a best practice. Um, and to do this, we have a, a, a user add command. Now, uh, you can go and do some research on what all these switches are in this, but uh, we'll make this a little bigger. There we go. Um, but there's the command we need: sudo user add dash m dash d, and that opt dash odu. That's the directory where uh, we're going to basically make our home directory for this user. And um, just just so you know, that's where everything's going to be. That's probably the most important thing. So you can change this to wherever you would like to have your install. And then at the same time, that is actually where the root user is. And then this is, of course, the username here. So you don't have to use Odoo as the username that we're adding. And you don't have to use this directory. Just make sure you're consistent that if you use something different, you use it throughout the rest of the installation. Makes sense, right? So let's go ahead and hit enter. And no news is good news here. Everything should be fine because it didn't come back with any errors. And we can assume it added this OK. So now that we've set up the user for Odoo for, our, for basically the system, let's go ahead and install Postgres database server. When we do that, we can do sudo apt get install Postgres SQL, like that. And only 20 megabytes for the whole thing. And it won't take long. Postgres is remarkably fast and compact and quick to set up. So just like that, it's done. Now we need to create a, a database user uh, for our Odoo account. Now, so, so something to always remember, it gets confusing, and I'm not the ultimate Ubuntu expert, but you, you have a, a system account for Odoo, and then you also have to have a separate database account as well. And that's uh, the same in other platforms. You know, you're, you're going to have users for your database. So this sudo su-postgres, that's going to basically 
access list access Postgres as the Postgres user, and we can create our user now just with this. So with this command, that's going to create our user inside of Postgres. And at that point, we are already ready to install the Odoo source code. So we're going to sudo su-odoo. And what this does is this puts us in the user Odoo. We're not anymore the user Ubuntu as we were here. You can see it. You say Ubuntu. Now it says Odoo. So you can always see here who uh, the current user is. And basically the sudo su-odoo lets us become the Odoo user now. So we're everything we're doing now, and that's why we want to download with the Odoo user, is so that all the permissions on all the subfolders and everything else is all, all fine. So I'm going to copy and paste this. I'll explain a little bit about this command I'm pasting. This is a git command to get the source code and actually pull it down from GitHub. And so you can naturally see the git at the front, and the clone means we're wanting to make a copy of of that source and here's the address to the source and the reason we use depth one is that we don't want all of the previous revisions and 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 fixes we're saying just give us the latest very newest versions of all the files just the lowest depth possible depth one and then here's our branch 11.0 so if you happen to be watching this a year from now and 12 is out there's probably a good chance this video is going to work really well and you're going to probably in, be able to install Odoo 12 similarly and you would change this out and likewise if maybe you needed to install Odoo 10 you would um, change this to 10 and then here of course is our directory we want to install into so we're going to use Odoo is like our Odoo directory and then we could have other versions of Odoo inside of it and it just makes uh, for a little bit better organization and I'm going to hit enter and it's going to take a little while for it to download this source code, but you'll be surprised how quick it'll come down. It's not, uh, you know, gigabytes and gigabytes of data. We're talking, I think, a hundred and, and something megabytes. So uh, I will pause the video here uh, while it retrieves all these uh, things. Well, look at that. We got some really uh, good download speeds here, and we're already done. So just like that pretty much we have our source code so I didn't even have to pause the video now that we have our source code <clears throat> uh, there's still a lot of requirements that are not installed and you have a decision to kind of make here you could go ahead and just install these requirements now um, under the standard Ubuntu user uh, but uh, another practice that is uh, really common is to use uh, a, a virtual environment 